Hello, everybody. You've tuned in to the Indiana State Police Roadshow, brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance, Cops for Kids, subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance, and Tom Trial. Tom Trial puts us on on uh, YouTube each and every week. He's behind the scenes waving at us. Do you see him waving, Shanna? I see him waving all the way back. He's waving. Nice guy. He is a super guy. Go to uh, ISP YouTube site and look at all the uh, videos that Tom has put on there. Thank you for coming in, Shanna. Oh, no problem. Trooper right? Shannon Kennedy is with us today. He's been with us before, but going to talk about something real interesting. As a matter of fact, something that you're going to be doing this afternoon. I didn't realize that when I asked you in here. Yeah, the rest of the week we're out there um, with the recruits. Good deal. EVOC, which stands for? Emergency Vehicle Operation Course. Um, we kind of just call it EVO now because okay. it's just multiple courses that we do with them. And how long have you been doing that? I tried to figure that out the other day, and it's uh, pretty close to 25 years. Wow. There was a little lag time when I was in PIO. Right, uh, yeah. At the time, First Sergeant Burston yeah. Yeah. said, well, I really need you available. So I didn't get to teach as much, but it if it should be close to 25 years. And First Sergeant, at that time now, El Capitan. Oh, yes, El Capitan. <laughs> Send him a text. I hope he responds. So uh, talk to us here a little bit. 25 years till today. Have the cars changed any bit? Oh, slightly. Um, slightly. Um, Do you remember what you started out with? We were still having um, some Caprices, okay. the Chevy Caprices. The, the old box, box ones? The old box. Okay. Which was uh, my first car, which loved that car. Yeah. And then we uh, transitioned. There were a very short time period. We had the what we refer to as the upside down bathtubs. The boats. The boats. The ninety one to ninety three Caprices, which were fast. Yes. Really nice cars. Just took well. a forty acre field to turn them around. Yes, it did. You um you had to make sure you had plenty of space to do those those turnarounds and yeah. the and backing into the boxes were nightmares with mm -hmm. them. And then of course then we rolled over to the Ford Crown Vic, which we've had for Buku years. Right. And just uh probably in the last five years. We have finally switched over to the chargers, which um, even though those chargers we're using now have a lot of miles on them, mm -hmm. they will still get up and go. They're almost too fast for that track. They're, uh, they're, they're what I refer to as scary fast, aren't they? Yeah. When we were testing them, I was like one of them that got the test and had to write reports for the department. Right. And the, all the instructors kept saying the same thing, scary fast. Yeah. And they are very scary cars, but they're fun to drive. So in your training, when you do e Evo... Um, do you just train our department, or do you go out with other departments? Or I actually train for three separate academies, N not only ours, but the Basic Law Enforcement Academy, which is where the sheriff uh, deputies, local. the local guys, the college guys, the marshals go through at Plainfield, uh, the main academy. Then I also help with Northwest Law Enforcement Academy, which I believe they cover like three or four counties up in the region, and they come down two times a year. So I work with them also. Is the ISP course and the basic course pretty much the same? They're identical. Okay. Everybody, uh, all law enforcement officers have to pass those courses. So um, it's initially 40 hours, and that's what the basics, uh, basic academy, Northwest Academy does, and also Southwest, but I don't work with them, but they come up to the law enforcement academy. Um, they all, we all do the same basic 40 hour course, and then we have extra hours we've built in for like today. This week, what we're doing with them is um, simulating pursuit training okay where we've actually brought in dispatchers and they're going to dispatch they're going to drive they got to give their location and hopefully keep the car on the track that's something new i mean that's something actually, we didn't we, do well no we well not you or i and uh we started this i actually built this program with at the time our communication liaison officer kelly dignan who is now over with ipsic okay i always say it wrong um she approached me about doing some training with dispatchers for pursuits we were having some problems and we sat down and we uh, kind of went back and forth a little bit on it and we developed this program where we bring in dispatchers not only ours but dispatchers from all over the state and it gives them an idea of why we do what we do right and to the point now that the basic academy has now incorporated that into their training too so this program was actually started by state police probably um, 10 12 years ago that's, that's an excellent program because, like I said, when I went through, we didn't do that. But you have to do that. That's that's going to be oh, yeah. a given when you're in a pursuit. And especially with dispatchers, they don't understand sometimes why we do what we do. So we explain to them um, what it is we're doing in the car. And then we would put them in the car with us so they could see how we're multitasking. Okay. So it's an eye-opener for them. So how do you change a driving habits of an adult? They're, they've been driving for a few years and they it's hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, i'm sure it's it's hard um and especially now because a lot of these kids we're getting they're adults but they're kids to me right um there's not a lot of driving experience so they they're really afraid to make any changes 
but we have to show them it will work. Um, it, we're doing the same things that we all did when we went to recruit school because it doesn't change. Um, you can't change science. Mm -hmm. You know, the cars, we, the, the way they're set up and now these chargers will drive themselves. Um, you know, we got to explain why the car is going to do what it's going to do. But basically what we're showing them will work. And we just have to keep showing them over and over. And by the end of the week, they get it. They see a difference. Um, at that point, then we got to kind of reel them in a little bit and go, well, now, wait a minute, you're not a race car driver. We're just showing you how this works and it's, it's going to change. It's going to improve, but you got to stay with the basic principles. So what are some of the bad habits as you see? What's the biggest thing that, comes uh, one of the, recruits? one of the things that I see a lot and they don't even realize they're doing it is when they go to turn the car, they'll reach underneath the steering wheel and turn it left or right. And I'm like, don't do that. Even just casually driving. I go, what? especially here in Indianapolis, yeah. you don't know who's going to blow a light. And I always tell them, what's going to happen? I make them stop. And then I go, what's going to happen if somebody hits you head on? Airbags going to be deployed. Well, what's going to happen to your wrist? And they look and they look at me and they're going, that's not going to be good. No. Yeah. So you got to break that habit. Um, riding the brake. There's a, you know, in the civilian world, I call it, when I explain it to them, I call them at the Walmart parking lot braking. Right where you ride the brake slowly, just keep riding, riding, until you find that per perfect parking space. We tell them that's not good. You don't want to ride the brake. You just want to hit the brake to shift the weight of the car to the front, give you a little more grip to be able to do what you we want you to do, which is steer around things. And that's one of the things we teach them, steer around it. Stay off the can. brakes and steer mm -hmm. around it. Yeah, brakes are not good in our line of work. Yeah, yeah. Not good. You got to look down the road and, and get ready to hit the brake when you need to hit it, get off of it and steer around it. So, uh, question completely out of the box, but uh, maybe something you talk to him about. I'm just curious, how many of them can drive a stick anymore? <laughs> I don't think not many can drive <laughs> automatic. Uh, but stick, no, I, I I keep seeing a thing on Facebook. Uh, you know, we could cripple a generation by yeah, just put a stick shift. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, what's some of the courses you say you're doing evoc uh, this afternoon? Are doing the pursuit? What else do you do besides that with them? Well, the 40 hours they initially go through. Um, it's we start off with some basic skills. Um, as an instructor, it's mind numbing. Um, because it's just very slow, uh, repetitive, so they can understand the drill and become proficient in it. And when, what we tell them is, is this builds on everything we're going to teach them the rest of the week. Once they qual and everything they do, they have to qualify. They it's uh, not that day, um, but the rest of the time, everything is under time and no cones. They can't hit anything. Okay. Uh, which changed over the years, um, but I'm glad the academy made this change um, about 15 years ago. Zero cones. If you hit one, you fail, and then there's a whole process we got to go through. But then the rest of them is just building on those skills and setting up ins uh, courses inside the track. There's a huge pad that's out there. Um, I walked the perimeter of it, and I think it was uh, a little over half a mile wide. I think it was almost like six tenths of a mile wide all the way around. Mm -hmm. And then the the outside track is a road course, which is 1.1 mile, and we set up different skills incorporating all the basic skills we taught them on day one, but we just threw speed into it and them having to make decisions on when and what to do. Well, again, you're listening to the Indiana State Police Roadshow brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance, Cops for Kids, uh, Trooper Shannon Kennedy, the Indiana State Police uh, EVOC or EVO training. She's uh, been in with the training for about 25 years doing the EVO, the fast driving of the cars and, and also, Shanna, the slow driving the cars, because we do a lot of patrol where you're not going to mm -hmm. be in pursuit training. So I'm sure a lot of this, and our department even jumped on the bandwagon a few years ago, said, you know, uh, little things like backing in the parking spot. Mm -hmm. Are we yeah. seeing changes with that? Are it we kind of fluctuates, I think. I haven't really watched the stats like I did when I was in training and running this program. But, you know, the fact that we have to keep bringing it up, that we can't back up, that right. is a problem. Um you know, it just comes down to guys just need to slow down. And not only, I think a lot of it is we watch too much of the mirrors. We're okay. still not turning around. And I know these chargers are got a lot of blind spots. Yeah. But, you know, it takes a couple seconds to back it in. But, you know, when you're running out and you're going on a call, right? you do, it is safer for you to come out, you know, Four. you know, the front of the car first than trying to back up. And now with the cameras, I... You know, that'll be interesting to see what happens. Are right. guys using the cameras um, to Because the new cars the have the cameras, don't they? Yeah, I have a brand new one, and it has it. And it, it has helped. Right. 
but I still look at the mirrors and I still turn around and I can glance at the camera. But it'll it'll be interesting to see what happens with our backing crashes because we do have that issue. Does it have a warning system with it if you're backing? It up? makes a lot of beeping noises. <laughs> the closer to an object you get that it doesn't like, which I just wanted to see how close and what would happen, and it, it lets you know. <laughs> I, I didn't hit anything, but it lets you know. <laughs> so. What do you find the scariest about recruit training uh, on the driving? Um, they will go into tunnel vision. They will zone out on you. Um, and you can kind of tell rather quickly, you know, the longer you've been out there. So mm -hmm. when they um, stop talking or, you know, respond, I'm like, because I'll, I'll During the, the actual out. training. During the actual driving. Yeah, they're yeah. behind the wheel. And you look over and you can see the sweat, even though the car may be a little <laughs> on the cool side. And and their hands are totally, you know, white, white knuckled and they're not talking anymore. And we literally have had them hold their breath. Yeah. And you just kind of go, hey, and I'll just kind of like tap their helmet and they'll just kind of look at me and go, will you breathe? <laughs> so that is a little scary having somebody behind the wheel of a car that is literally just zoned out on you. And yeah. because of it, it has put me in places on that track that I care not to be. So have they, have you been in the position where the dispatch is calling them and they're not even answering? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So I'll even, and. I'll say, hey, she's she's going to call you until you answer her. So you might as well just answer her. What? That's the response I get. What? <laughs> yeah. Pick up the mic. Just tell them your location and breathe. Keep talking to her. So it's it's a whole different world for them. It's, you know, a lot of people can't multitask, you know, in everyday world. But now we're telling them to get in a car, chase somebody, drive, call out your location, call out the vehicle information, let dispatch know where you're at. In, in an area you may not know anything about, I think that's when the reality starts hitting them. And then you could just watch them, just, yeah. you know what's happening, the tunnel vision's kicking and, in. And, and do it safely, right, without yes, hitting anybody yes, else. Yes, with keeping the car on the track, <laughs> ultimate goal. What about snow and ice? Do you guys uh, do anything with that to kind of get them ready for that? Well, as an instructor, um, I enjoy the fact that we're usually out there in the summer and the fall, and we're not out there on the snow and ice. Right. Um, because that is miserable out there. But, um, Several years ago, we found a product that um, simulates driving on snow and ice on pavement. And it's, uh, it's a skid wheel. And literally, when it's on the car, it sounds like a little kid driving a big wheel. That rumbling sound. That crunching noise. It looks just like it. So we have to get a smaller tire. I think it's a 16-inch tire we have to get. We put uh, the, the skid tire around it, the skid ring fill up the tire again and then we being rear wheel drive vehicles we'll put it on the back of the cars and then that simulates um we can get up to 20 30 miles an hour and you can feel the car breaking away so if you have a front wheel you just put the, car, the wheels on the front so uh, that's how we simulate it during the summer months okay but we've been out there in the winter and um we get a lot of practice yeah <laughs> we get a lot of practice <laughs> get a lot of uh grass time uh, yes, <laughs> a lot, a lot of grass time, a lot of snow time, a lot of, uh, hey, we got to dig out of the drift time. <laughs> that happened one year and one put it right into a snow drift and we had to dig it out. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So we got about a minute and a half left in your 25 year career, uh, with Evo and doing that training PIO and all this that you've done. Oh, what's been the, what can you look back and say that, that makes me proud that I've done that. That's, that's the best part of my career here that I can see that. I just recently had a trooper. I think he's a senior trooper. Send me an email and I haven't talked to this troop in years. And, um, he sent me an email and he said, I want to thank you. And I'm like, what? And, um, he apparently had been in a crash and, and it's just like, we've all heard. You know, those old troops that trained us, right. that sat us down and said, this is what you need to do. Um, we always say in the moment of crisis, you're going to hear those old troops talking to you, which I thought these guys are crazy. But it's it's true. You'll hear them. I still hear one in particular, um, probably one of the best instructors driving I've ever seen. But um, he said, I heard you leave space, leave space, leave yourself an out. And he said, because of that, I was able to react. I kept myself together and. He's still involved in the crash, but it wasn't as bad as it could have been. So the fact that um, I know at least one listened to me. Words rang true. And it did. Good. Well, we're down to 20 seconds. Shanna, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for your service to the Indiana State Police. And uh, make sure you stay buckled up out there with the recruits. Oh, I will. I appreciate it. One.
Again, Shanna Kennedy, Indiana State Police Evo Instructor with Indiana State Police. Thank you for listening to The Roadshow. We'll catch you again next week on The Roadshow. Thanks for listening. The Roadshow is out.